just turning on the recording. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we don't have uh, very many people here, um, and we're not sure if it's the holiday or if we've got a distribution problem. I'm starting to think that we might have a distribution problem. Um, but we have something that uh, we want to talk to you about this week, and I think everyone here at Stone Hill is going to be uh, getting involved with uh, talking about some things that are that are changing here at Stone Hill, and we're doing it because the uh, competitive landscape is changing. And I don't know if you can tell this, but that that picture in the back of the rice paddies that represents how the competitive landscape is changing. Um, and so we would like to talk a little, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the stuff that we had in the advertisement, but we're going to talk about some, some new directions that um, Stonehill is going in. And some of you may have already heard some of this. Uh, some of you may not have heard some of this. And so it could be you to you. But I don't know about you, but I, I think I would imagine that you can feel the, the energy, the, the feeling of being a Medicare agent, the regulations and all that stuff seems to seems to be changing. And uh, your competitors are starting to act differently. And. Um, and well, things are changing here, so. Um, I am going to just talk a little bit about uh, some of this stuff, and then uh, we're going to have Bob take over. Um, there we go. So we're going to. I'm going to. Bob's going to talk a little bit about uh, changes. He's just going to give you uh, an indication of how some of these things are changing this year. But then we're going to talk about something that's happening here at Stone Hill, which is that we're changing our uplines. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll describe what an upline is. I think most of you probably know what an upline is, uh, but I'm just going to make sure that everybody does. And then we're going to have, um, and so one of the, well, we'll talk about those uplines and then we're going to talk about why we're changing those uplines. And we're going to be talking about some of the software and some of the technology that's going to be coming from that. Uh, and then Terry's going to show us how we're trying to keep a, uh, a human focus, a human, a human interaction uh, going on here. So, Bob, why don't you take it away? Great. Hi, everyone. It's good to uh, be with you again on this uh, beautiful St. George Friday. Not a cloud in the sky. Anyway, uh, here at Stonehill, we're aware of many of the changes that are coming down the pike from, uh, from CMS. Of course, every year, CMS releases their uh, marketing guidelines, and it's, a, it's quite a thick document. Uh, and they usually highlight the things that have changed from the year before. We're just starting to get into that. However, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the noise out there of some of the big changes and how it relates to agents. One of those being that uh, SOA, they're going back to a 48 hour be between a SOA gath a gathering and SOA and meeting with the beneficiary. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the changes that we are seeing is CMS is really trying to uh, rein in the uh, lead ag aggregators, the people like uh, that are advertising on the TV constantly about uh, you know all the phenomenal benefits they can get if they call the 800 number. I think CMS is really trying to to rein them in. Yeah, most of the changes that CMS makes, a lot of them anyway, are driven by complaints uh, by beneficiaries. Uh, they had uh, more than a tenfold increase in in uh, complaints from consumers the last couple of years, and most of that stems from the confusion that the lead aggregators, the the TV commercials, 
have created. So they're really trying to uh, they're really trying to uh, rein that in. And with the 48 hour SOA uh, timeline on that, that four days before the end of AEP, they're going to change that SOA, uh, go back to kind of, uh, you can gather an SOA immediately at, during the last four days of, of, uh, of uh, AEP. Also, in-person walk-ins, um, there, there is an exception which we were thinking for a while, there wasn't an, except, an exception for walk-ins, but they have created an exception for walk-ins on, on SOA. Uh, the other thing is- uh, Can you jump in here real fast? Sure. So uh, everybody, we are just doing this uh, real briefly today, simply to show the, the competitive landscape change. And we're gonna do a deep dive. Bob's gonna be, and I are gonna be doing a deep dive on this in, in several weeks and talking about how the different carriers are interpreting this. Anyway, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Sure. That date that we're going to, Doug and I are going to do that on June 9th. Hopefully we'll have an in-depth review of the changes of CMS, but also an idea of how the carriers, different carriers are interpreting that. One of the other things, there's going to be a 12 hour cooling off period between an education event and a sales event uh, in the same location. No SOA collection, uh, edu education events. Again, agents can collect the BRC if uh, if it's requested by an attendee. There's uh, modifications coming down according to uh, TPMOs, that's third party marketing organizations, and that includes agents. And there's disclaimer, one of the things that they're making a big deal about is that uh, agents must inform beneficiaries that they can get help from uh, a sh uh, the ship organizations. I just want to touch on that for a minute. Uh, most of you know what a ship organization is. It's, uh, uh, it's services that are provided, uh, senior health insurance information programs, much like facilitators were uh, years ago. It's imperative, I think, for you, if you're building your business, if you're actively building your business, that you get a hold of aging services within your county so you can begin a relationship there so you can uh, foster leads there, also uh, answer questions. Let's go to the next slide, Doug. Um, <clears throat> Agents must get approval from carriers before submitting materials to HPMS. That's just one of the ways they're trying to rein in marketing. You want to jump in on HPMS and what that what that represents, Doug? Sure. So that is the database that is run by CMS, and it's the database that the carriers have used for a long time to submit their plans, to submit their statistics, to submit everything. Uh, into CMS, and CMS is is opening that up to agents, and they're saying that um, they're saying that agents, if they are going to uh, meet the marketing criteria, uh, and we'll be going over that in depth on June 9th, uh, There are ways, and I just want to point this out: there are ways for you to do quite a bit of good marketing that does not meet the CMS marketing criteria. Yeah, Chuck, what's going on? On the last slide, it, it said something about we had to disclose all of the plans that we represent and um, and the Part D sponsors as well. Uh, it, how do we do that and have it approved the, the, in the form that do we have to have that disclosure approved by the various carriers or do you know? So that that thing there and, and actually Bob, I'm jumping in, go ahead, Bob. Well, the big thing there with that, uh, uh, Chuck, is that we're over the next several weeks, uh, we're gonna do a deep dive and try to get uh, interpretations from different carriers uh, but we want time to digest all these all these changes, review them, and talk with compliance people, uh, with the carriers to see how those things are represented. You know, one of the things that says in there you, is you're you're supposed to. What part of the disclaimer is you're supposed to tell beneficiaries 
that they can talk to ship uh, the ship people if they want to talk about all all the different uh, plans in in a, in a locality. I don't see that a ship person will have that information at the finger at their fingertips. But again, again, um, we don't want to discuss too much here because we want a chance to digest it and get the interpretations from the different carriers and kind of be able to review it and see how it fits in with, with you as an agent. Uh, again, that's June 9th. We hope to have that uh, in-depth discussion of all these changes and how they affect you and what you're going to have to do. I hope your, mic that is off, Chuck. your mic is off, Chuck. In, in addition to, to the ship, didn't it also say that we had to disclose all of the plans that we represent? Yes, you're, that is you're, correct. You're, in, in, you, in, for the ninth, would you please see what kind of a format we're supposed to do that in? If, since everything's yes. supposed to be, I mean, all of the all of the different carriers uh, create all their marketing materials with the assumption that you're only going to sell their product. Period. <laughs> you're you're correct. Uh, one thing we found, Doug and I have found, is that. Uh, it's quite a pendulum swing from what how one carrier interpret interprets the rules and how another carrier interprets the rules. There, there's a vast, vast uh, hole, so to speak, and we're trying to we're trying to get our hands wrapped around our our brains wrapped around that so that we can present something that uh, makes sense to you as an agent. Next, Doug uh so that's that's so that's it for you yep so um by the way chuck let me just say in that in that verbal disclaimer that you're supposed to do you just have to give a number um to the people number of how many plans are in the area and how many of the plans you represent um we'll wait to see how far the carriers reinterpret that so everybody I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the changes that are occurring here at Stone Hill. We're changing our uplines, but and I think quite a few people know that, but there's this rumor that's going around that Stone Hill has been sold. And uh, we have not been sold. We're still the same people that we were, uh, but we are changing our uplines. For those of you who are new to Medicare, an upline is another insurance agency um, that is closer to um, the insurance company than, than many of the people. For example, for many of you, Stonehill is closer to the insurance company than you are to the insurance company. The insurance company actually pays Stonehill to support you rather than having you go to their, you know, producer support or something like that. Um, so you're supposed to be able to get to us. You're supposed to have more detail. You're supposed to have uh, better service by coming to us than you do by going into a uh, telephone queue where the people who are serving you may have only been working there for a year and they really don't know the space. Um, and what it does is it creates a hierarchy and um, the the insurance company pays all of the people in the hierarchy a certain amount for supporting you. Uh, you get the full commission, but there are these, these uh, uh, relationships that are higher. Now, um, there are a number of reasons that we are changing um, our hierarchy, and we think it's going to benefit you. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of the feedback that we've had over the last three or four years as technology has been becoming more and more important to our work and to our jobs. And um, it turns out that one of the complaints that people make to me on a regular basis is that they are tired of having to learn all of the different uh, carrier platforms that they are tired of the carrier platforms changing every single year. They're tired of the regulations changing every single year. 
And all of those things are sort of like trying to push, you know, trying to hold the tide back off the beach, you know, with your bare hands and bare feet. Uh, but there are a number of people who are talking about that. So we've been actually thinking about how is it that we can simplify the lives of our agents with respect to the almost innumerable the different software platforms that they feel obligated or that they feel like they are being pressured to learn and many times don't have time to learn it or it just doesn't lend itself to being learned well. Um, a lot of the software platforms that have been out there have had a cost to them. Um, there's a consolidation that's going on in the industry. One of the things that happens is that that consolidation is leading to free software from the uplines. And in this case, I'm going to mention a name here called Integrity Marketing. Um, there's a lot of this free stuff, but that hasn't stopped all of the people who saw an opportunity here to jump into the space and to try to create paying solutions. So they'll have things like CRM or enrollment software or something like that that you you pay for so one of the things that i paid for and ever if anybody called me and they wanted to know about uh, medicare supplement quotes i paid for a platform for for years called csg and if someone called me i would go onto the paid platform i would do the homework uh for the agent and i would send it out so that the agent didn't have to didn't have to learn the platform didn't have to pay it um, the the medicare supplement market has declined well enough that i was able to keep up with that and provide most people with what they needed um, just because most people are now especially in the area where we work are mostly engaged with medicare advantage um, it turns out that these uplines now as the industry is consolidating and as cms is moving to um, try to make it so that people are more compliant and everything, there are getting to be more software and other types of uh, marketing and sales opportunities. And we see these things are being prepared right now. They're being developed and they will become available for agents uh, down the road. We imagine that quite a few agents will be suspicious of them when they first come out. Um, and, and well, they should be because CMS is holding agents. if is holding agents accountable for the marketing services that, that they use. So if you go out and you purchase leads from the internet, you better know how um, you better know how those guys got that lead and you better know that those guys got that lead compliantly because if there's a complaint that comes in and they and CMS or the carriers on you know acting on behalf of CMS investigate that lead company and they find out that it was gathered uncompliantly, you're the guy that's going to pay the price. Um, that's how CMS is trying to get back into control of what's going on in the marketplace. Um, we wanted to ensure all that our Stonehill agents have effective support from our upline and from us. Now, that, that can happen in two ways. You can be talking directly to our upline. So some of you talked with Ritter Insurance Marketing in the past. Some of you had good experiences with them. Some of you didn't have good experiences with them. But one of the things we always had until about the last year is we were always able to get them to respond really well to us. Uh, that kind of broke down in the transition as they were purchased by Integrity Marketing. My understanding is it's back, but we decided to make a change before the quality um, had been restored at Ritter. Um, and I, I probably shouldn't, I just probably spoke more than I should have there. Um, we believe that uh, this partnership, so we're going we're gonna to start um, working with, and I can't remember if I, yeah, here it is. So what we're doing here is, is we have been a Ritter and, uh, insurance marketing shop, and they were purchased by this company called Integrity Marketing. And I believe most of you have heard me talk about Integrity Marketing, or you know who Integrity Marketing is. They are Wall Street money. They have come in and they have purchased a lot of the NMAs from United Healthcare, a lot of the the MGAs from Humana. So all of the top insurance marketing agencies around the country 
Uh, many of the top ones have been purchased by Integrity Marketing. So I'm just going to go through a quick list here. If you've been with Stonehill for a while, some of these names will be familiar. We used to be with a large shop called Nyschloss and Fleming. They now belong to Integrity Marketing. We were with um, Ritter Insurance. They now belong to Integrity Marketing. We are now currently with Kellogg uh, Insurance Marketing. They belong to Integrity Marketing. Um, all of the major uh, companies that we've had uh, that we've had association with with respect to United Healthcare are now be now belong to Integrity Marketing. And when I saw Integrity coming in and taking over the market, oh, they started five six years ago. I was uh, pretty apprehensive. Um, I could see I could see them uh, getting a lot of power and uh, using that to benefit themselves and to hurt other people. And I was concerned about that. And it turns out that is not what's happening at all. The people who are in there seem to be very good people. They, uh, they are concerned about the industry. They are concerned about getting your voices heard uh, at CMS. And in many ways, they are raising the professionalism of the entire industry by giving a software that we've never had including software that allow us to track accounting better, attract uh, marketing leads and sales better. Uh, so it's going quite quite well right now in my, in my view because of the uh, entry of integrity marketing into the market. Um, everybody, so everybody that we have been part of the upline is now integrity marketing, but we are still shifting so our appointments will not be going up through Ritter Insurance. Most of them did, except for the ones that we had directly. So we were big enough that we were um, the top of the hierarchy with a number of different insurance companies. Um, but we are taking all those ones that we had with Ritter, and we're taking the ones that we used to be the top of the hierarchy, and we're moving those all under uh, plan advisors. Plan advisors is one of these uh, large uh, insurance companies that is now owned by Integrity Marketing. And uh, Integrity is taking all of the software developers that used to work for all of these separate companies and they're pooling them together to work on software that's going to be available for you. And, and I'm going to move to this uh, rather quickly now because uh, Morgan's going to come in on, and and Morgan, who who works with us here in the senior department, and talk with you a little bit about some of this software, and then we're going to try to open it up for question and answers if you have it. I just wanted to mention most of you probably know Nate Brown, that's his picture there on the screen. Nate now works for Plan Advisors. He used to work for Humana, but now he works for Plan Advisors. And he is uh, responsible for quite a bit here in the Western United States. And he came and talked with us. Um, uh, Plan Advisors, we really like that because they are, they're, they're bigger than Stonehill, obviously. Uh, and because they are bigger, they have connections with local carriers in California and in a bunch of other places. And they do have connections here with the local uh, regional carriers. I'm thinking of Select Health and University of Utah. Uh, both of them are regional, so they did not, like last year, have a chance to get their website so that they were doing the call recording and all of that stuff that, that was going on. And uh, Integrity Marketing through Planet and Plan Advisors through Integrity Marketing is able to offset, is able to offer software that does do this. So you'll be able to have one kind of software uh, that handles everything locally and everything nationally at the same time. And so you'll have one place where you can go and you'll be able to enroll just about anybody uh, from any carrier in, in one particular place that will store your scopes of appointment, that will record your phone calls, that will store them for 10 years. Um, so that's, that's, what, that's our primary driver in doing what we're doing, which is changing our upline. And they do have some great accounting practices and data sharing that we're hoping that we can take advantage of and that will become even more responsive to you guys. Um, 
There we go. Okay, so I just wanted to basically list these things. And, and the reason that Bob uh, was talking up front is so that you could see how the CMS is going to start making it so that it's indispensable for you to have good software to in order to stay in the business. If you don't have good software that makes it efficient for you to do what you have to do so that you don't have to jump through all sorts of hoops to start call recording and, you know, all the things that we talked about last year that you could do. Um, so here's some of the here's some of the functionality that that needs that you're going to need to have as 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 an agent if you're going to remain competitive as this competitive landscape continues to change underneath our feet. You're going to need software that quotes Medicare Advantage, prescription drug plans, Medicare supplements, final expense, and some ancillary all in one place. You're going to need it to be able to read off pre-recorded call scripts and disclaimers. You're going to need to be able to do enrollments for all of those carriers and receive credit for them, right? You don't want them going to medicare.gov because if they fill out the application there or you fill it out on behalf of them there, then you don't get credit for it. We, you're gonna want uh, software that collects leads across business lines, right? So for example, if some of you decide that one of the ways that you can get leads is by selling final expense, it's great to have a, a package that takes the final expense in, leads in. You can work those final expense leads, and then you are able to cross-sell those, those people into Medicare Advantage if you do it you know, compliantly. Recording marketing phone calls. Um, last year, you know, depending on the interpretation of the carrier, some carriers were saying you had to record every single phone call and other carriers were saying, no, you only had to do those that were in the chain of enrollment. Uh, there's been clarification that comes out this year and we'll see how the carriers interpret that. But CMS says, no, it's just marketing phone calls. Um, we're going to see that different carriers are going to interpret marketing differently. Um, providing agents with pre-approved personal web pages. So one of the things that is in this software that we're going to be uh, looking at is that it um, provides you with a compliant uh, personal web page that you don't have to go and get approved by the carriers and everything. I believe that, and, I, and I'm not sure here, and maybe there's some videos, and it's been a while since I've watched them, there's some videos that show how this software works, and uh, I believe that they may be able to get approval from some of the carriers without your having to go around and get a care, you know, approval to show uh, carrier logos and stuff on your website. I, I believe that's the case here. Uh, customer relationship management software. You can keep all your clients in there. You can keep um, your record of of your conversations with them. Um, over the last over the last several weeks, um, Stonehill is feeling also the increase in the number of CTMs or um, complaints to CMS that beneficiaries are making. They're getting so that they make them quite a bit more often. Um, and when when one of our downline agents receives a complaint, I receive an email message that tells me that someone has had a complaint. I reach out to that agent. I help that agent, um, you know, create the documents, create the responses. I try to keep them professional. One of the things that usually happens, and I've never seen where this is not the case, most of the time the complaints are frivolous. Most of the time they are uh, really going and saying all sorts of horrible things about the agent, and those things just are not true. And every single agent that I've worked with over the last couple of weeks has had good records, has had copy of the scopes of appointment, has had copies of the of the um, enrollment. Um, and so we've been able to lay out, a, we've been able to create a story, lay out a, a timeline so that we could respond to these carriers in a, in, a, in a timely fashion. It would usually only take us a day or two to put things together. If you have good customer relationship management, that's the type of resource that you're going to have. So I think the customer relationship management is becoming even more important uh, than it has been in the past, not just for managing your clients, but also for 
uh, answering these the increasing rate of complaints that are coming in, archiving scopes of appointment and permissions to contact, and then a lot of them have ongoing training courses that you'll be able to access. Okay, just about done here. Um, we are trying to get it so that we have block transfers on most of these things. Most of the of the carriers that we work with have agreed to block transfers. Those carriers who don't, there's two reasons that they don't agree to it. Either their technology does not allow a block transfer at this particular point, or their lawyers want to make sure that you jump through all sorts of hoops to, well, because they're attorneys and lawyers. Um, so most of the most of the stuff that your your upline is going to be changing. Stonehill is going to be the same. So it's really Stonehill's upline that's changing, and most of this stuff that's going to be shifting away from Ritter over to Plan Advisors. You may not even know. You may receive an email saying we did this, and we just don't want you to be worried about that. Or you may receive an email saying, could you please just go in and put your electronic signature in here? And in some cases, we may they. Uh, things may ask for a little bit more, more information. Now, you're probably all of them here are gonna be receiving if you haven't already received a message from, yeah, go ahead, Chuck, what's, what's, what's on your mind? Would you mind requesting uh, Select Health to acknowledge receipt of the information once that we've sent it in? Yeah, I can do that, sure. Thank you. Let me just make a note. Um, so that, that, uh, are, are those emails that are going to be coming out, will they be coming out from the carriers or from Stonehill or from Ritter or who will we be looking to receive those from? Um, so the one that's coming out from Select Health is coming from Select Health. Um, the other carriers, every single carrier does it a little bit differently. They all have completely different policies. So I don't believe that you're going to be receiving anything from Ritter. So Ritter has has submitted to us a block release for all you guys. Then we submit that to Plan Advisors. Plan Advisors then takes it up to the carrier, and then the carrier is going to respond. Who knows how? So sometimes they're, the carrier may send you something. Sometimes they may delegate that to Plan Advisors. Sometimes it may be to Stonehill. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just don't know at this particular point. Okay, thank except, you. except for the Select Health one, right? Uh, I think that if you haven't already received it, you're probably going to be receiving it. They're starting today. Uh, they, 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 they started with about 22 agents uh, last, last week, and that created some confusion. So we kind of put the brakes on, and now we're going to retackle that again today. So if you haven't received it uh, already, then you sh you'll probably be receiving it today or Monday or something like that. Um, the the lawyers, the attorneys at Select Health did get involved, and it was going to be a block transfer, and it was going to be real easy, and the technology allowed it to happen. But the attorneys did say, "No, we're changing the parties of the contract, so we 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 actually need agents to go in and and sign this again and confirm their contact information." So it's going to be asking you to confirm all the information that you would normally have. It it is a it is a uh, it is a new contract and they're but they're trying to make and you know, but the only thing it's doing is bringing plan advisors in above stone hill where before it used to be that you went to stone hill and stone hill went directly to select health but now it's you'll go to stone hill stone hill goes to plan advisors and then plan advisors go to select health um, hey Doug. yeah um, ahead, so pretty much is any of our writing agents, are they all going to do our agent number? Excuse me. Is, is it going to change at all with the carriers or not? They should not. So the only carrier that has you change writing numbers when you change uplines is United Healthcare. And we are not changing uplines with United Healthcare for that very problem. Okay. So our uh, United Healthcare will continue to go through Kellogg. Uh, but that should show up in the software that Morgan is going to show you in a second. But our other appointments will be going through plan advisors, but that should be showing up in Medicare Center as well. Okay, thank you. Hey, hey Doug, we have a question from Bill Turner. He's saying, will commissions be affected? 
Oh, I see that bill. No, commissions will not be affected. So you will continue to receive 100% of the commissions. Um, yeah. So um, we'll still be there if you have commission troubles. The service that's, that Stonehill offers is we can, you can either tackle the carrier about those commission problems or you can ask Stonehill to help you with tackling those commission issues. Um, it's up to you. Okay. Um, final word here uh, before I turn this over to uh, Morgan. That is, uh, Integrity Marketing has lots of subsidiaries, and I just put a few of them up here Plan Advisors, Ritter Insurance, Kellogg, Nyschloss and Fleming, Berwick, Agent Pipeline. These are all really big names. They're all subsidiaries, wholly owned subsidiaries, and most of these guys are still marketing. So you may be getting you may be getting email or some type of uh, marketing from these people and you think, oh, this is, you know, I can tell this is associated with integrity or I can tell this is associated with someone that I've heard of before. So I should probably take this seriously. And I'm just going to say, please make sure that it's coming either from the insurance company. It's coming from plan advisors. It's coming from Stonehill um, and that it's part of this because it's going to be very easy to think that you're you're facilitating this and you're actually uh, doing something else. Uh, in all cases, please feel free to contact Stonehill. We'll be able to do the research and let you know what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm gonna have Morgan share. Are you ready for that, Morgan? Yes, hello. <laughs> okay, let me show my screen really fast. So I'm just gonna show what it looks like for the Stonehill Medicare site, which is stonehillmedicare.com. Let me pull it up. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you go to stonehillmedicare.com. Um, it has the training resources that we're going to be talking about today, most of them. Um, so the first thing that they, we have is the Medicare plan details page, which, I'm sorry, there's background noise, one second. Okay, I'm sorry about that. All right, so this is the Medicare plan details is the first thing that I'm gonna talk about, which is when we usually refer to the P cloud, that's what this is. So that's Medicare plan details. If you click on that, I'll show you. The password for it is MA2023. And if you ever forget, just let us know and we can put it in for you. And then it'll just show your basic like plan needs. So if you go to Aetna, it'll show the different things for 2023, updates, plans, things like that. That's kind of, and when we tell you we're putting things in the P cloud or um, anything like that, it's usually in here. So that's where you're gonna go for that one. I'll go back to the regular screen. So Morgan, could I jump in here real fast? Yes. Um, so that what I'm hoping that the people online here notice is how easy it is to go to the carrier name and then find the enrollment kits or find the brochures or whatever it is they're looking for, as opposed to having to navigate through all of the different carrier websites. We're trying to make it as simple and efficient as possible so that they don't have to learn all of those websites. They can just go to one place and they understand how a software tree works and they can do it. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Yes. So then the next thing that we'll show you is the training calendar. So this is where all of our pinnacles or any events that we have um, are going to show up on this training calendar. If you just click on that, it'll take you down here. So this one is showing up for today. Um, they have the three hour ethics, which is tomorrow, which is not tomorrow, next week. <laughs> um, okay, so that's pretty much what that one will show. And then we have a YouTube link as well, which has more detailed videos. 
than we have on our site. And we're going to continue to add more as we go. These are just kind of the first videos that we have so far. Um, as you scroll down, though, it'll show you more about Medicare Center, which is really what we're hoping this site can be helpful for as well, is helping you to get through Medicare Center, how to do it, how to move your clients from a different portal to this one, um, how to import and export. Um, it does do call recording. Um, you can do that through Medicare Center, which is really nice. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that, which are very short and very easy to go through. Um, so we have a few different ones. We have like the quick overview and um, that just kind of is gonna give you a basic general idea of how to use Medicare Center. Um, and then we just have basically all the other ones that will help you. So scope of appointment overview, um, if you're wanting to quote and enroll in depth or if you're wanting to send to send a client to your site or you can even send, or send a quote to a client. Um, and they can do it on your site as well. Um, and this also shows you how to import and export clients. Um, and just basically things that are just going to be helpful for you in Medicare Center. Um, as you're going through Medicare Center, if you're having any questions or concerns about it, please feel free to give us a call. I'm also happy to do one-on-one -on -one trainings with this. So if you're just not figuring out how to do something, I'm more than happy to help and go through that with you. Um, I could even do like a Zoom kind of Google Meet like this where I can show you the site like on hand. So um, the another nice thing that they, they do offer a Medicare Center is the free personal website. Um, that's what I was talking about when where you can have your clients actually go to their site, to your site, and it'll they can enroll and they can do everything themselves. Or you can use your site and send it from there to your clients. Um, and then they also have a mobile app with information on that as well. Um, and then in the bottom of our page, it just has the contact information. So the basic number for us to always call. Um, and then it has all of our phone numbers if you need any of us. Um, and then it also has this little chat feature down here in the corner um, on the bottom right, which is just a little purple chat. And you can send a message to me and I will send a message back. Um, and I try to be as fast as possible with those. So if you have anything you ever want to, any questions or, or any um, thing that you want answered quickly, um, you can send that there as well. So, and that's pretty much the website. But if anyone has any questions, let me know. I'm happy to go over anything else, but that's kind of the general overview. Well, thank you, Morgan. So what's the URL on that again? Stonehill Medicare? Yes, stonehillmedicare.com. Okay, you're going to stop presenting, right, Morgan? Yes, sorry, one sec. So there what we we're trying to do is we're trying to get it so that you just have to remember one place to go and most of the stuff that you're going to need, um, you know, regularly you'll be able to you'll be able to get to very quickly. And if you need stuff out there, um, if you need stuff out there that's not there, we're certainly willing to go look at it and uh, collect it so that you can have something that's out there where you always know where it is. Of course, you can always store it on your own system and everything, but we're just, we are trying to simplify your life. That's what we're trying to do. But we don't want to get too caught up, and so we're going to have Terry talk a little bit about um, how Stonehill is is trying also to. We're trying to change, but we're trying to stay the same. Terry. Okay, we are still going to be in the same building and in the same office, and um, we've been here for many years, so we're not going anywhere anytime soon. And um, we still have. A conference room we've downsized a little bit and we do have a conference room and if you want to come in um, to bring some of your clients in we're welcome to help you with that but you need to call us in advance so we can make sure that a room is available for you because I know sometimes we have you know two or three people in here and we have to put them in different different rooms so that you will be able to use it 
Um, we also still have the same, um, our enrollment kits, which we've had forever, and we will still have them so you can come in and get them. And, um, and then also we can drop ship some of those papers to you or those enrollment kits to you. But also you can go into the pCloud, which um, Morgan's told you, that you can go in and you can find the stuff in there that you will need to print them off. And um, we would be glad to help you in any way that we can. And we are still here and we would love to see you guys. It's been a while since we've seen you all in person. So please come and see us. Hey, Terry. Yeah. Uh, so there's this this guy, maybe you've heard of him. He's talking in the chat. His name's Jeff Jones. He's asking, what's that purple icon on the Met, on the Stonehill Medicare.com site? Um, what's all this purple stuff? Can you tell us what all that is? Terry, can you tell oh, us what that color, is? I'm sorry, the phone was ringing. Sorry. Oh. Um, the purple is... It's the Medicare um, color that we have chosen that we will be able to help you with things. So we have uh, one of the things that Stonehill has is we have quite a few different lines of business uh, compared to other Medicare uh, shops. Um, so we have obviously Medicare, but we have uh, we have under 65 healthcare, we have group, we have individual, we have life, we have disability, we have just about uh, anything that you can think of except PNC. And so we are trying to make it so that you can identify materials from the various departments. And it turns out that uh, the, the color for the senior department is sort of, is sort of a purple uh, color. And so that's why if you go to the um, StonehillMedicare.com uh, site, you'll see there is definitely a theme of purple there. It's just saying, well, that's just a different way of recognizing that that's part of the senior department. Okay, so. And we, Doug, if you don't mind, I'll just mention, we can send that website URL out to everybody on the call here, so. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so we, I don't know if you can tell, but I was uh, trying to rush through things uh, pretty quickly. Uh, that is because I'm thinking that um, you are going to have questions about some of this stuff. And so we just wanted to give you an opportunity to ask the questions. Now, some of you have already asked questions like, will commissions be affected? And, and the answer is no, but you may have other questions. You may have other concerns. Uh, for example, one of the concerns that we had is we send a message out to quite a few people uh, this week uh, explaining this, and we talked mostly just about the Medicare department. And what that did is that it re immediately raised concerns in people's minds about whether or not their select health contracts for group and under 65 were going to be changing. And uh, they're, they're not going to be. But my, my working suspicion is that some of you do have other concerns. And so just like to find out if you would like to be willing to ask those in front of everybody here today, or if you would like to call us and chat one-on-one, -on -one, we're certainly willing to do that if you have concerns where you wanna do that. Doug, we have a question here. Gene is here in the office. Hi, Hi Doug. Hey, Gene, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, in the past, I know that some select health agents have been told if they didn't maintain a minimum of 10 contracts that they would lose that, uh, that appointment. Has that changed with the new Pinnacle arrangement? Yes, so that only is in force if you have an appointment directly with select health. And when they first started into Medicare, that was their primary model. They wanted to have most of the agents appointed directly and they wanted to motivate them. There still are agents who were appointed directly with um, Select Health. They still labor under that particular thing. But if you are in the plan advisor or the Stonehill hierarchy, that does not apply to you. 
if uh, somebody wants to change from a direct contract to Stonehill, does it change their commissions or what things are changed? No, it does not change the commissions. So you will still get 100% of the commission, whether you're direct to Select Health or if you're through Stonehill. Um, it does mean that Select Health will, pay, will be paying an admin fee to Stonehill for supporting you in most things, even though sometimes you might have to still go to the carrier. But for most things, you can come to us. Did I answer your questions, Jane? Yes, and in addition to that, um, I assume that Select Health will be part of the um, enrollment tool that, that you're getting with everybody on the one tool. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, that's that was uh, probably the primary driver is to make sure that we were putting as much simplicity into your hands as we possibly could. Um, because we do think the competitive landscape is changing, competitive landscape is changing and that it will be um, dramatically more labor intensive for you if you don't have these simplifying software packages. So exactly. So by by putting it all into the one platform, we've got one place where we can pull up all the plans. We can do all the enrollments through the same platform. We don't have to worry about uh, how different platforms, uh, different carriers have their recording system set up and so forth. We can do it all in one place. Yeah, that's the goal. And uh, I believe, uh, I haven't heard a report recently, but I believe that you'll even be able to do most of uh, the health risk assessments. And some carriers offer uh, additional compensation if you do the health risk assessment uh, at the time that you do the enrollment. Um, and uh, they were working last year feverishly to try to get that in place. It, it wasn't in place, if I understand correctly, by the time AEP hit, but I'm hoping that it's in place this year by the time that AEP hits. Thank you. Chuck, uh, your hands up. It's just kind of a question. I mean, you're, it's kind of far out there. If, if I have all of my uh, appointments through Stonehill and whatever other upline it is, are they, and I decide to completely retire and and sell my business, my block of business to somebody, is they just have to get it appointed with you? Um, the block of business would transfer. Um, if you were to, to sell that somebody who was not in in line, I do want to say that uh, we would love you to, to sell to somebody in line. We One of the things that Stonehill does is we actually try to uh, support our agents in that way. Um, so some of our agents purchase things uh, and, and are looking for opportunities. Stonehill also does that if you're trying to make sure that your uh, your book of business will be well taken care of, then Stonehill can help with that as well. So don't forget us. Anything else? Doug, I got a question. Yeah. Um, so I always know with software and that stuff, everybody touts of all the wonderful benefits and that stuff. Do we know if it, there is going to be a cost to us agents to be able to get access to all this stuff with integrity marketing and whatever? Right now, there is no cost associated with it. Um, so there are quite a few, let's say, competing software packages out there, even some uh, by some of the uplines that have a monthly cost to it. Those things, I believe, if they are part of the integrity marketing family of, of subsidiaries, those things are going away. They're trying to consolidate all of that software development and everything so that you, the agents who are in the integrity downline become competitive and have everything that they need to do at a very reasonable cost. And Jeff's raising his hand. Uh, so Brett, uh, that's a great question. Um, there are other integrity uplines uh, that will give you a discount on a monthly fee because there is a fee for every agent to use uh, Medicare Center, Lead Center, et cetera. But part of uh, why we've 
chosen uh, plan advisors and put most of our contracts with them is to do two things. One is to guarantee you that you will not pay a monthly fee for uh, Medicare Center ever. Uh, that's a commitment that we have from plan advisors, which uh, saves you about $500 a year. And the other thing that we've tried to do is to make sure that we're very well represented from a regional carrier standpoint with Select Health and University of Utah. And plan advisors is the only other uh, organization besides Stonehill that currently has both of those contracts. So by aligning us and them, we're bringing all the benefits, especially to those that write the majority of their business in Utah, to be well represented in one platform that doesn't cost anything, that not only encompasses uh, regional carriers, but the national carriers as well, as, as Doug has said. So that was something that we've been working on for a really long time. It took a lot of coordination between us, between plan advisors, between integrity and carriers. Uh, and we feel really fortunate that we're able to do this because like Doug mentioned earlier, it's going to pay big dividends uh, the more uh, we, we get familiar and use this. Another point, just uh, some of you are well versed in Medicareful, which was a Ritter tool, and Medicareful did not have uh, the regional carriers on it, which I know was frustrating to many of us. So we've solved that problem. In addition to because Ritter has been purchased by Integrity, some of the Medicareful tools that we liked are also being integrated into Medicare Center. So as this continues to develop over the months and years, it only becomes a much more powerful uh, solution to help us streamline our business, whether it's a regional carrier that comes on board or a national carrier, but you don't have to worry about it. We'll take care of that back end and make sure it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, thank you. Well said. Yeah. Real quickly, for those of us who already have Medicare Center accounts and enter information entered in, I assume that will continue. Continue. There will be no change. We won't have to restart that or anything. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct, Craig. So Perfect. Some of you started that process uh, with United Healthcare last year. Uh, we've made sure that that United Healthcare integration is also integrated with all the other carriers that uh, you are used to selling. So what you'll see is just an expansion of um, the carriers that you can quote and that you can record and do all these types of things. There's only steps forward. There's not a step back. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? One more tidbit, sorry, and then I'll get off my my soapbox. We love your soapbox. So some of you have used Medicare Center, some of you use Medicareful, some of you have your own CRM. Maybe it's just a spreadsheet where you keep track of all your clients. We, Stonehill, we're, we're committed to making sure that that information is exported in whatever platform you're currently using and imported into Medicare Center not only from a compliance standpoint, but an efficiency standpoint as you go out to write business uh, this next AD. So uh, myself and Doug and Morgan, uh, and Nancy, we're all here to actually help you with that. And we'll do some trainings on how that works. We also want to let you know that if you need some hand-holding, some one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we're more than happy to sit down with you in the office or via Zoom or whatever the case may be. And do as much of that heavy lifting for you as we can because we know that that's complicated. Uh, sometimes it's intimidating, um, but we really uh, think that it will be useful and valuable to all of you if we could help you make that migration. So we're more than happy to do that in whatever capacity we can. Uh, thank you, Jeff. That's an important point to bring up. So thanks a lot for bringing that up. Um, we really do want to make this as easy as we possibly can for you. We're trying to make it so that what was going to become very complicated for you is not going to become as complicated. And so anything that we can do is, is in that direction is certainly what we're trying to do. Anything else before we go? We're at the top of the hour, so normally we don't want to hold you all day long. 
Thank you so much. That was awesome. Hey, thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.